research has been shown that uh, you forget about 90% of the information from a lecture within a week because it generally just goes in one ear and out the other. It's not very engaging, it doesn't stick in your mind. So um, in order to prevent, well, correct this, it's best to uh, increase engagement. So. What is engagement? Engagement is generally getting more active in your learning. So instead of making uh, students sit down and just listen to you for three hours, two hours on end, it's best to try and get them involved in their education, try and get them excited so they actually have a desire to learn as well as um, to listen. Um, it's been shown that if a student is more engaged, they're more likely to, uh, to get involved. Uh, they're more likely to uh, actually want to learn and they'll uh, improve their academic performance. Uh, underperforming students tend to respond more when engagement's increased because clearly they're just not engaged. They don't really care about their education. They're just, they go to school because they have to and they sit there and just daydream really. But if you get that type of person engaged and involved in their education, they're more likely to perk up and want to get involved for. So what type of uh, methods can we use to increase engagement? There are many different ways, but it can be simple. For example, we have the clickers in lectures. So you ask a question and then you'll r just respond with A, B, C or D. And then it gets you to pay attention and you get involved and you feel like you're contributing towards the lecture. Uh, experiential learning, so a hands-on environment. So say uh, students will go out into the open and actually learn about the forest or the, uh, the ocean environment, like the oceanic sciences. They don't just lecture them, they take them out on a boat and they actually get them out in the sea, uh, catch fish and dissect them. More hands-on type of learning. Uh, just asking students questions can get them more involved. Uh, being funny, if you get your students to actually enjoy the lecture and use humour, they're more likely to perk up and want to come to your lecture. But the highest form to get engagement, the highest method to increase engagement is during leisurely activities such as um, playing sports or your favourite hobby or anything such as that. Um, but for me, it's video games. I love playing video games. And that can be applied to education. So video games can be designed specifically for education. So there are certain um, developers such as Blunt who created their own educational video game. So it was a, he designed it around a business. So you'd start a small business and then you would expand it and make it into a giant corporation. And along the way, you would be taught about business. You'd be taught about politics, about the laws, different methods to increase your, uh, your business, and you were rewarded as you went along. So it was fun, it was more engaging. People wanted to keep it going. Um, they also had it, instead of lectures, they had it alongside lectures. So uh, I think it was Squire used Civilization Three, which is a historically accurate video game. Um, has a lot of sociological applications. It's very accurate. It's shows history and I think he involved it longer in his sociology class, class and the students that were underperforming loved it, they got involved and their grades shot up. But the people who were already doing well, they didn't see the point in it, so they just said I'm not, not going to bother doing this. So it shows that people who are under engaged grasp onto these methods and use them and get more, en more engaged and increase their, uh, their engagement. But you can just completely cut out lectures and use a uh, a game called Quest Atlantis, which is like a, you create your own avatar and you'll get immersed into this world where you'll say become, you'll become someone, you'll take on an identity, so you'll become a pharmacologist or uh, a diver or whatever, and you will actually live their life for a short while. And I think it was, they used it for science in, um, I think it was ocean, oceanology, sort of, oceanic sort of uh, learning. And the students that used purely Quest Atlantis video games significantly outperform the, uh, the students who just used lectures. So video games are very um, applicable, but not all of universities and um, schools use them for several different reasons. But I managed to find one school which does, and it's Quest to Learn. It's a school designed by video game de designers and developers, and teachers, of course. 
It was funded by um, a society that believes in video games to be very effective. And it's designed around the same curriculum as a normal school, but they're taught in 10 week missions. So for 10 weeks, they'll have to do a mission in order to learn. And it sounds pretty cool. So they'd have like, for example, here, they'd be playing a game of risk, which is where you try and take over the world. You like fight each other. But at the same time, they'll be taught about the countries which they're getting involved in. So say this country has more resources. It has this kind of history, kind of like the Civilization three sort of game. And it's more hands on sort of learning. Um, and then they're assessed with a one week boss level which they call it, which um, involves them creating a project with their teacher, which they will be criticized on and uh, tested on. The students are also taught how to create their own video games as well, which increases their, um, their learning. The problem with this school is it's quite new. It's only been in introduced in 2009. So they can't really test to see if it's outperforming regular schools, although there's countless research to show video games and just games in general, gamification increases learning. So this sort of school needs more research generally in the future to see if it is working. Um, and so in conclude, lectures are generally quite terrible. You'll probably forget most of this next week. You won't remember any of it. Um, there are many different forms to engage your students, such as clickers, humor, all kinds of things. We can incorporate them into lectures uh, quite easily. Uh, just give them as homework um, and then they'll, they'll learn by themselves hopefully increasing their own engagement and their need to learn uh, you can't completely cut out lectures but that's quite controversial people don't trust it much and it needs a lot more research into this field so uh, that's all for me cheers thanks any questions Yeah. And just watch the television like they normally do. Definitely, yeah. There's yeah, um, involved. Is that, do you think that's something that's... Yeah, you know, definitely, yeah. There's um, a study showing that, on average, students and young children play about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour of video games anyway. So if we can design a video game and say, here's your game, here's your homework for tonight, yeah, go yeah. and play it. Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, great, here's my homework. And I'll, they'll enjoy it and they'll want to learn. So yeah, it's something they could quite easily... Um, yeah, yeah develop themselves. So right. with the class to Lara, just following up on it, do you think eventually it might be integrated into the entire school education system? Yeah, help? hopefully. It's become quite new. It's a new thing. So if they can, it's only, I think, in 2015 will it become a full middle and high school. And once they can show that students who are going to the school all the way through are outperforming regular students, then perhaps the government will um, realize and go, hold on. This is much better. Let's gradually uh, convert to this. But I think you'd need to go to the politicians themselves and try and persuade them and cause an argument with them because they're not teachers, really. They're just bank managers and they don't, they don't know anything about education, really. They're just good managers, you know. Yeah. Um, the risk game, you know, it's practical. How would you make a video game on religious education? Religious education. Yeah. Yeah. And still be able to have children engaged. It is quite difficult with um, certain topics. But there is um, other games. You can't just gamify everything, really. Um, for example, I think it's interactive fiction, which is like a lecture slide, and you'll read everything. And you'll be given a game. Each, each stage, you'll um, be quest. You'll be uh, given questions. And you'll have to pass the questions in order to progress further in the lecture or the game. For example, so students will have to go back and learn in order to keep progressing within the kind of lecture slide slash video game sort of environment. Yeah. That would be quite time consuming as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, you know, I think I do agree with you that yeah. you know, a successful way definitely needs it. But yeah. you also have to think of how much time schools have got for limited Yeah, time that's it, yeah. It was uh, a homework kind of incorporation yeah. you could throw into maybe just yeah. play for an hour every day. Or 
if, if, if it works better than lectures, they could just have a complete afternoon of just playing video games, educational video games, like Quest for Learner, just solely games, um, and it's been shown to be significantly better. So. It's a warm for me, an educational one, because our educational channel's out there already, I've spoken on it. Yeah. But an educational channel could really get into this, where there'd be a lot of interaction with people from the outside. Yeah. I don't know if any of you have seen or you know, even used it, it's the X Factor app on Saturday night. I haven't seen it, no. Download it to your thing and you, you get questions that they ask you, and you have to answer the questions and you get timed on it and all that. It's like an interactive live thing that's happening cool. on the show at night, you know. Yeah. And you can predict who's going to go out. So it's, it's, it's really it's quite good, yeah. Yeah, making it fun. Yeah. So people, more people are going to watch it, aren't they? So they're going to get their numbers up there. That's it. It's quite good, actually. Just trying to get. Just trying to get people involved in exactly it in some yeah. way yeah. instead of just making them sit down. Yeah. Try and push it yeah. forward. Yeah. That's what we're we're doing for our dissertation. Lectures versus video games. So, yeah. So that's everything. Yeah. One more. It's in New York. It's uh, funded by. It's like a special educational sort of test funded by the government and um, Is it quite a small one to make? Yeah, it's only, there's only four years at the moment, but they're, every year they add on another year. So they've only got four at the moment, but in 2015 they should have a full uh, full school. Just just, they'll just keep adding another, that another one. That's just their school, yeah. Uh, I think that it's quite... Um, specific you know you have to be a good student already sort of thing um, I didn't really look into the requirements to get in but I think it's for young children you start young and then work your way up middle school sort of thing like I, I would have loved to have gone to a school like that my, I didn't like my school yeah average students I'm sure they, they have used a uh, special education as well but um, it's just an, a regular school yeah, I was quite surprised to find it myself. And there was, a, there was another school which travels the world and they learn out in the environment. So they'll go to, say, Sydney Harbour and they'll just dive and learn about their environment and things. It's really interesting. Just more hands on sort of learning, you know. Yeah, time's up. Is that everything, yeah? Okay.